All right, guys, and welcome into the next episode of the Sweat Session Review. Today we have some 10NL Zoom guys on .es, or the regulated pool in France, Portugal, and Spain. Uh, we have Sh 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 Shylock, which I think I pronounced that correctly, mate. Hopefully I did. He goes by the Discord name of Q-S-C-F-T-N-H-J-I-L, whatever that's about. Uh, not going to question that too much. But um, as always, lads... If you're interested in getting the sweat session review done, um, just get in the Discord. Get in the Discord below, and uh, there will be. Or sorry, get in the. Or look in the description of the video below. There will be a link to join the Discord. Excuse me. And uh, after this sweat session, this week, lads, week three and week four will be free at the moment. So <clears throat> my advice to you is get on top of that if you're interested in getting one of these done. All right. So without further ado, mate, we'll jump into this. So good luck, bro. Good luck, bro. Obviously, another standard three bet with the king, king ten. I just need to move the mic a little bit. Probably falling here, yeah. Probably falling there. What I was just about to say. Um, against 11 next year, man, probably just only calling. The thing is, I'm usually open min here, so if somebody makes it 12 big blinds, they're going to be mixing 4 bet and call. But I think when somebody just makes it 4x here, mate, I'd rather just be calling here mostly. If I had to guess. Nah, definitely not falling here, bro. Definitely never falling ace-10 suited. Never, ever, ever. Yeah, just too good. Like... It's it's just you have to call there. Have to at least call. Never fallen. Never ever fallen. Never ever fallen there, bro. Here's to be the Italian pool, exactly. Sorry. Here's to be the Italian pool. We're checking here with the Jack Ten as well. And we're just going to fall on that turn now when he bets. Small blind. What do you do? Which is fine. Seventeen X. Yeah, definitely the Italian pool. My apologies for misreading that. But yeah, I was told there might be that many <clears throat> there mightn't be that many big spots in this session, but that's still it's still a possibility of I for me no hustling spots, I should say. It all it always makes me um not laugh, but you know, when, when people say there isn't that many big spots in the sweat session or you know, I had to record two videos and there wasn't many big spots in any of them. It's not always about big spots, lads. If anything, it's more important how you're playing the smaller pots in general, in my opinion. In my opinion. It's very, very important how you're playing the small, like, you know, we'll say 5 to 10 big blind pots to 10 to 15 big blind pots, man. Just anything in that, in that vicinity. It's very, very important that you're playing them very, very well. Let's see, over the King 7 here is fine. <clears throat> See what we do here with the king seven. Do you bet? Do you check? This is already close here, mate. This is already close here without back doors. And this is um if you watched one of the play or sweat session reviews I did there previously, bro. I might not fold here versus half pop, but the fact that we don't have barely any back doors and there's still two players that have an uncapped range here, I'm not gonna lie, bro. This is already very, very close here. Only thing that might maybe call here a little bit more is this guy's V pip and PF4. But this is not a snap call by any means. Let me make that very, very clear. This is not a snap call, okay? Um, so do take that into account. The thing is, when you're multi-way, lads, and you're facing a bet from any sort of player, as I said, the only exception here being that it's a recreational, okay? Like, 
you might call here more. But like, you still have the cutoff to worry about. You still have the small blind to worry about as well. Small blind is obviously a fish, and guy in the cutoff is obviously a fish as well. So I don't mind calling here for one, but you have to understand continuing here with two players behind to act. You need to be selective here without very, very bad, without very uh, little backdoors with the king seven of spades. Like king seven of hearts, here, pure call. Like any king jack, king queen, pure call. Um, you know, maybe ten x of hearts might be fine. Ace ten of hearts, obviously, is a good example. Queen ten of hearts, jack ten of hearts will be a good one. Um, but this king seven is close, man. This king seven is close on the flop, honestly. But definitely calling for for a half pot bet. But if he starts betting bigger, bro, we'll be a little bit more uh, skeptical of that. Yeah, I don't mind. I, I like the small bet here. I actually like the small bet here more so than the than the bigger bet. But against the recreational that they might overcall here, I don't mind if they have like ace x of diamonds here, seven eight of diamonds, eight nine of diamonds, or something like that. I don't mind. Well, that's fine either way. Just again, I, I'm, I'm never, I'm never folding King Seven there. Just let me make that very clear versus half pot, and especially versus that profile. But I just wanted to highlight that for people watching this. That being selective in what you continue, um, versus bets multi way, is important. Like if that was a reg profile there, man, honestly, I'd be very, very cautious. But against a whale like that, never folding for sure. I mean, we're just leaving that color tag, mate. <laughs> obviously fallen, but yeah, just was, he's, he's obviously that color tag for a reason. Obviously colored that color tag for a reason. Three bet size in here with the king queen is fine, obviously. Let's take it down. I mind betting this king ten with the king of clubs as well. Yeah, I, I think I would just start betting here, man. I know the small blind is going to connect with this board and big blind as well, arguably. But having the king of clubs here is very, very relevant. Um, people are going to cap their range if they just check call here. They're probably going to fast play way too many of their strong hands here. So I really actually don't mind betting here with the king ten with the king of clubs here. You still have two overs technically as well. So let's not forget that. So you have like bluffing potentials on club turns. And also two overs to the king in the 10. If they check through again, I'm just going to start bluffing, by the way. Just going to start bluffing here. The big blind bets are just going to fold, obviously. But I'd rather just bet that on the flop, bro. Bet, bet, bet this on the flop, check back turn. But I'll definitely start bluffing here now. And you don't have to bet big here. You can just bet small because I think they're just going to have way too much air in their range. Queen seven, I missed the action there. But by the size of the pot here, probably just went check, check, flop, check, check, turn. And uh, I would never overbet this river here. I would never overbet this river because it's very, very difficult to get called by many worse hands. And we want to try and get calls from one pair of hands, which are never going to call here, bro. So I would rather just bet three quarters here uh, with this hand and then maybe go small with kind of, you know, A6 if you have that. The thing is, I probably bet on this turn with this hand a lot as well. But I would just rather bet three quarters here and try and force a call by some river 10x. Maybe let him bluff catch with 4x, 5x, 3x. And then just pick a block size. And as I mentioned, then maybe with, you know, 6x, uh, 10x, maybe some king 5, ace 5, something like that. But we do get called by an overbet. I'm very, very surprised that. I mean, look, better players are just going to call 
or fold there with any hand, in my opinion. But I will start betting this King-10 here, mate, immediately. Cannot check this down now, by the way. You cannot check this down. You're leaving money on the table here if you're checking this down, mate. Yeah, I'd bluff this. I'd bluff it. I'd bluff it. Half pot, two turns, half, uh, 33. Don't check back. God damn it. Like, you're never going to win there enough with King-10. Like, if some lad has ace, ace, some ace, six suited there, like the big blind. It's just a disaster, bro. Like, I know it doesn't feel great betting into two players' ranges, but, like, the check, check, flop, check, check, turn, and check, check, river. One of the most overfolded lines in the game three, lads. One of the most overfolded lines in the game three, and you cannot be checking back hands that just don't really have that much showdown value. King-10 does not have showdown value there. King-Queen does, in my opinion. But I would honestly just bet that on the flop, man, because check, check on the turn. I'll probably bluff the river if he checks again. And given that it went check through on the flop, I would just start betting it on the turn anyways, exploitatively. And again, like that, man, like this is like you said, this is a prime example of you saying there's not many hands to look at here. Oh, there, are, there, there wasn't many big spots. It's not about them big pots, man. It's not about the big pots. Like, that's an example of a spot where you're leaving money on the table by not bluffing them enough there. And don't bluff this ace-jack. Ace-jack in this situation, man, against the recreational has way too much short on value. Against the reg, it has way too much short on value. So, think of all the other hands here that you're going to defend versus the min-raise on the uh, uh, pre-flop. You're going to have off-suit king-x. You're going to have some off-suit uh, jack-x, jack-eight-off, jack-nine-off, whatever the case may be with a diamond. As an example. like, But ace-jack here, man, even though you have a diamond blocker, it's just too much short on value. Too much short on value here to start turning into a bluff. And like, if he calls here, and he gets to the river, and what, you're just going to bluff ace-jack again? Unnecessary, bro. Un understand the thresholds and what your range looks like overall. And what you should and shouldn't bet. And what does and doesn't have short on value. Okay? Uh, probably start with a high-frequency bet here with this hand. Especially, mm, we do block king-queen suited, we unblock hearts. This might be a double barrel hand here. This might be a double barrel hand. I think this will be a double barrel hand now, especially, especially with the ace of spades and the fact that we block king x and we unblock the, not great, not, it's not great blocking queen 10 and, you know, queen 10 of clubs and queen jack of clubs, which is hands we want to fold, obviously. But this blockers are still relatively good overall, blocking king queen and having the ace of spades that we can barrel on rivers. Yeah, so this again, too passive, in my opinion. The thing is, man, you're still going to have sevens, eights, sixes with a heart here. You're still going to have jacks, tens, queens with a heart that you're just going to put so much pressure on here by double barreling this. So immediately right now, when you check this turn, well, I take that back. Nah, I spoke too soon. Um, you just need to bet this, in my opinion. Like, you just don't have that much short on value here. You beat some ace jack of hearts, maybe some ace ten of hearts. But that's going to bet the turn quite often here, mate. In these formations because it just has to sometimes it might check back but honestly when people bet small and check term and they're overfolding a decent amount that like betting these hands that might be bet check or hands that you don't mind bet folding so to speak um are just going to generate way more ev in practice so you need to target that range you need to put pressure on that range like the thing is people are going to overfold here on the turn so that's more of an incentive for us to shift these sort of hands that might be mixed bet check although i do think this is going to be a high frequency bet if not pure um to just always bet it just to always, always bet it, man. Always, always bet it. So, you know, keep that in mind, bro. But the thing is now, if he bets here, we just have to check fold. That's the problem. Like, it's not, if this was a small blind versus button or small blind versus cutoff, I'd be way more inclined just to check with, at, a, at a frequency. But in these formations, man, like, I do think this is going to be bet very, very aggressively. You know, it's just an easy check fold now, and it is what it is. But I would definitely bet this on the turn, man, and follow through on non. And follow through on a spade river, and again, having the ace of spades is good because you can follow through on a spade river. Having the ace of spades on a non spade river is bad because you block. You, you, you don't. You don't want. You. We don't want to have that. So I would just barrel this with this combo. Maybe if you didn't have the ace of spades. No, I'd still probably barrel this pretty aggressively on the turn. I'm not going to lie. Not going to lie. 
Obviously, check calling the ace king and check calling is fine. I didn't see the size in the turn, but it's okay. Against a fish, it's going to be fine. It's an open for me. Again, like that, guys, when I say this is an open for me, I'm working with 500 NL ranges. So if this is, if you have 50 NL ranges here, Sherlock, then, you know, you know, fair enough, then it might be a mix, mix raise fold. It's not going to be printing EV by opening that either way, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Wouldn't worry too much about it. 9-8 here is a low frequency 3-bet for me, so just be careful about that, not to be doing this full. But probably for simplification with a lot of the ranges pre-flop, man, you can probably just get away with that very aggressively on these stakes, I would say. I'd rather not 3-bet these pseudo connectors against a shorter stack like this. I'd rather play a little bit more pseudo broadways and stuff like that, where, you know, if you hit your hand, you can win a bigger pot. Or sorry, if you if you raise, you're just gonna have better equity against you know. If you're three betting the broadways here only against this stack size, it's just gonna perform better in practice because if you hit a hand, you're just gonna stack off because the SBR is gonna be shallow. These hands only play well against these profiles when they're deeper. Okay. It's very very important to take into account. Mix and betting and check on that flop as well. I see you're not using an RNG, which I don't expect you to be using a ten and L anyways, mate. Um, I would just see that very, very high frequency for small, if I were you, mate, and in future, I would just drill the nodes. I would only probably have a small bet and a small bet and check sizing for you. And I would drill the turn and river after locking the flop for a 33% sizing. So I drill turn and river in the bet bet line and just seeing how that looks, only having that one sizing, mate. Like, you could honestly simplify just with betting range most of the time, barrel on low connected boards and mid connected boards, just connected boards in general. But, um, yeah, just take that into account. I mean, again, I don't, I, I would see about high frequency against this profile most of the time. Because I'm just going to continue way too wide of a range pre flop. And they're going to overbluff on the check, check, check line. I'm oh, sorry, the check, set, check, call, check, and bet line, bro. Yeah, he's got sevens, that's fine. He would have actually got value from sevens there, by the way, technically. But yeah, I mean, in theory, checking back that hand most of the time is going to be the best play. Because obviously betting that hand and getting raised is going to suffer. But bear in mind, you are against a recreational man who's going to overcall most of its opening range pre-flop. So you're still going to get a lot of calls on the flop there with hands that you're ahead of. And also deny equity to hands in general, which is important. Which is very, very important. Yeah, we just fold here I, yeah I, I would fold here now like you're better off three betting this mate than 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 calling here um i wouldn't mind calling some like ace ace x suited here instead of seven nine but i would rather just three bet this hand mostly if you are going to do this because taking down the pot pre-flop here and taking down five big blinds instead of putting in an extra three big blinds yourself going multi-way three-handed with nine high out of position which sounds better, taking on the pot pre-flop or, you know, going multi-way out of position with nine high. i let you decide that. But I'm glad you found the fold. As I said, three, three better fold than made is going to be better. Just going to play better. But yeah, I'm happy you didn't, um, I'm happy you didn't I'm happy you did not uh, call that pre-flop. I don't, I don't, like, the thing is, in that, in that situation there, of course you're going to still three bet the ace-kings, ace-queens, ace-jacks, uh, probably ace-ten suited and stuff like that, but I don't mind just calling hands that play well multi-way. That 7-9 for me is not going to do that, okay? But I actually don't mind 
three betting that against somebody that's isolating too wide as well. So do take that into account. I am up. Probably low frequency betting here. But mostly probably just checking range and just simplifying it to that. Simplifying it to that. The call is fine, obviously. Again, like that. This is going to be an over bluff line by fish. When they bet half pot, half pot, half pot, but I don't expect uh, don't expect him to bluff this river too much. And you just check back. So yeah, it's going to be an over bluff line when they bet half pot, half pot, and probably more size and pot and below. See there, he's betting ace jack. Like it's just criminal what they're doing, turning that into a bluff. But that's why that's where the over bluff comes from against that profile because they just don't understand thresholds of um, hands that have short on value and basically hands that don't. Again, like that, mate, just check range multi-way. Just check range multi-way, especially, especially on this board. Yeah, I'm going to check call here now. This is getting close here, but again, if this guy is a recreation, I really don't mind calling one more. Um, he could still be value betting some 8x here. But yeah, it's definitely getting close. Given we have outs on a jack to improve to the nuts, well, the close to the nuts anyways, we lose to pocket sixes, obviously. Um, I actually don't mind calling one more here versus half pop, but if we face a bet on the river, mate, I would be folding. I will be folding. I, I just don't expect him to reopen the action here ever too wide. Yeah, I think this is an easy fall. Like, this guy snap bet this river as well. So, it's going to be a time and tell for me to, uh, yeah, just get the fuck out of Dodge here, mate. Like, yeah, you have to remember that this was this was uh, three way on the, uh, sorry, four way multi, or four way on the flop here. So we need to take that into account here too. And like, I don't mind the check call and the flop, check call turn without us to improve in the nuts, but we're just going to be getting the fuck out of dodge here now. There's no bluffs in this person's range here. Even the dynamic post flop on the flop in particular. Do not want to see a call here. You got me on the edge of my seat, mate. Come on, well played. Well played. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I'm happy with that, bro. I'm very, very happy with that, actually. Very, very happy with that. I think it's... For me, for me, it's a very, very easy fold without any hesitation. Because against... Reg profiles in particular, that bet, bet, bet line heads up is going to be under blocked by the river as well. So, given that that was, you know... Uh, Multi-way on the flop, bro. It's just going to be one of those things where it's just going to be a very, very easy fall. But I do like the check call on the flop, and I do like the check call on the turn. I do think that is well played. River is well played too, obviously. Uh, I think I'm going to start betting with against this profile here now. Two turns, two turns is fine. The thing in theory, we're supposed to have massive overbets here at a frequency. But I will just start betting here. Small, small here exploitatively is fine too. Um, but I'm definitely going to go three quarters here on the river now. Yeah, we'll just size up here, bro. <laughs> Which we'll decides up here because if he, ever has, if he ever has worse ASX here, I want to get value from that. And he might become overly sticky with some Queen X here. You just don't know. But we'll definitely bet 75% here. I think your hand has more than enough equity here in general to just size up a little bit more. Like, yeah. Yeah. I would have went for the 75, bro. I would have went for the 75. Like, you're going to get a lot of falls there anyways, but that shouldn't de-incentivize us for sizing down in general. Um, but I would, I would rather just go three quarters there myself. I would definitely rather go three quarters there myself. King six had opened there too.
Um, bit of a weird one here with the King Jack. Where I'm thinking, do I want to just call four about this or just get out of the way or just actually call here? I'd rather call four better and just isolate the fish. Like, I think call, calling is the worst option. I think calling here is the worst option. Like, this guy is a 42 V pit player, man. I want to I want to get this guy heads up. So I do. I want to get this guy heads up. I want to isolate him. And if this guy ever clicks it back pre-flop, the thing is, you don't have to make this so big. You can make this like 10 or 11 big blinds and it's going to be fine. You're going to isolate yourself heads up against them and you're going to be able to play that in that, in that situation post-flop, which is way better... Way better than potentially letting the small blind and big blind in here. And obviously, the under the gun is never going to fold. Under the gun could end up four betting here, exploitatively, because you just called on the button. What does your range look like here? It's extremely capped. It's extremely, extremely capped. So, definitely want to be four betting this most of the time, bro. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. You just let the fucking blinds in here, bro. And this is just a disaster. Go multi-way with this hand uh, uh, in this situation. A disaster. But just rather four bet the recreational and go heads up. See bet the flop here, high frequency. If I don't improve, check, check on the turn. Reevaluate on the river. Yeah, given the SPR in this situation, or sorry, the, what's in the middle? If this, went, if this went heads up with the fish, man. I'd rather just, you know, uh, treat it like a three bet pot. And this king six, I don't mind raising here as well, actually, because we can still get value from queen x of diamonds. We can still get value from worse king x. And uh, we can just get value from draws in general. So I actually wouldn't mind raising this and checking back the river on bad rivers itself. Straight completing rivers, flush completing in general. I think it's better here. Probably, probably 50 to 70% here is fine, Mitch. We'll definitely go bigger than this. We'll definitely go bigger than this. Something like 12 to 14 big blinds I would, I would much prefer. You're just, you're just giving way too good of a price to get there with any draw, bro. Just, just again like that, man. Like, understand, like, he's betting half pot on the turn. He's never going to be that strong. He's never going to be that strong because people are going to fast play their nuts here for, like, m very polar sizes usually. And, um, yeah, you just want to get value from that when he bets half pot. It's going to be a lot of draws here most of the time, like some 7-5, Queen X of Diamonds, you know, worse King X, like I mentioned. And this is the problem, man. This is the problem. I would fall versus this guy, playing 19-14 in this situation, because I just don't think he's ever going to have enough bluffs here. But you are getting 3-1 to one in a call here, so you just have to be breaking, breaking even here, what? 25% of the time, mate, by the looks of it. Probably end up calling here, but you kind of dug yourself this grave by um by not raising the turn bigger. By not raising the turn bigger. But the only problem is this guy is relatively tight. Aggressive fact aggression on is 1.8, so it's a bit on the lower end across all streets. Probably gonna be on the lower end for a for a player like this, yeah, just just raise the turn bigger, man. It's probably fine folding against him, a 1914 guy. He's not going to be getting two out of line. I would have different stats on my hood though for river aggression and stuff like that to get an indicator of you know are they over or under bluffing, are they aggressive or are they not? And if he's never aggressive enough on river lads or, or, or in general, mate, then you could just start falling in because he's never going to be bluffing enough. Never ever going to be bluffing enough. Uh, Jack 8, what happened here? We check call the turn, yeah. yeah check back. Um, yeah, only call it here, but this guy is the hand you just played previously. This guy is obviously relatively tight for the most part, I would guess. So... In these formations, man, it's going to be a very, very under bluff node by the river. So if he goes very, very big, I actually wouldn't mind just betting small here on the turn to check back river. Just to deny some equity to maybe Jack 9. Or maybe not Jack 9, but like stuff if he has King 10 here. Obviously, we blocked that heavily. I would rather just go for a block bet here. Block bet and then probably check back river because I don't see many worse hands that are going to call here. 
I mean, checking back is fine, but I'm never, ever falling river. Yeah, easy call. Yeah, I mean, it's, I, I, I would nearly rather just bet the turn small when I didn't check back river and save myself eight, nine big blinds there, possibly. The thing is, man, this guy is just, like, very, very tight, tight, tight player. I mean, I'm not sure what your tags mean, mate, but if that orange tag means nitty... I mean, his stats kind of indicate that anyways, mate. 19, 14 guy. Very, very tight player. I mean, tight in terms of, like, putting money in the middle and stuff like that, but I have no doubt if I was using my hood on here, his river stats would be uh, relatively on the more passive side, I would guess. This 8-9 here, bro, as well. Just be careful. I know you have a good shot here. But if you get... What I always ask myself in these situations, if I have these sort of hands with pair plus draw, which is technically what you have. And, like, just ask yourself the question, man. If you bet and get raised, are you ever happy? Okay? So, look, of course you get min raised here. You're never folding. But just in general, man. In general, if you bet this hand and get raised, are you ever happy? And the answer is no, bro. The answer is no. And you will get check raised on this board. I know you have all the sets and the straights and all that jazz. But it's just not a board where you're just going to be C-betting your entire range, bro. And you need to be conscious of that. So that's what I usually do in these situations, man. I ask myself that question. If I have one of these hands that, like, I know I can bet sometimes. I know I can, you know, do whatever sometimes. I just ask myself that question. If I bet and get raised here, am I happy? And I really think that's a good question to ask yourself, bro. I really, really do. We cannot fold there, though. We cannot fold there versus the min raise. That's crazy. Can't do that. Not allowed. Not allowed to defend or fold versus the min raise, mate. I don't think we're allowed to fold anything <laughs> versus the min raise with any sort of backdoor or equity in general. Like, imagine... I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying people are going to do that, but just imagine in general if people were min raising there and you're falling pair plus draw. It's criminal, mate. And King Jack, I can't, you can't fall under the gun as well. Like, this is what I'm saying, man. You said there's not many big spots going on here. I'm seeing fucking tons, bro. That you're doing, like, not like massive blunders, but like, mistakes. That shouldn't be happening, bro. That should not be happening. I like that 10s, you can just see right on this board for range, man. 33, 25, yeah. Yeah, this is a board where you just see about your entire range, man, in these formations, like, everything. Everything here, mate. And it's just a good example of people not understanding that. Because I know for a fact, if you're checking back this board, mate, you've never drilled the early positions versus big blind, ever. And uh, again, like that, man, I don't want to put you down, but I know the fact you're playing 10 and L, you probably wouldn't have spent that much time doing it. And that's fine. I'm not, not saying anything about that, but this is definitely going to be a high frequency bet here, if not simplification for a C bet for range. But now, once you check back to flop, just try and check this down. I mean, you, you can probably just bet a big blind here, maybe one and a half big blinds here is what I do, bro. Excuse me, one and a half big blinds here. Or something like that. Just Jack-10, I would definitely bet as well. Why would I bet Jack-10 here? Equity denial. And get better hands to fold. It's a no-brainer, bro. Like, if he has King-Queen, or King-Highs, Ace-Highs in general, Queen-Highs itself, random 8-9s, random 8-7s, and you're getting into fold and denying equity to that, it's a win big win with Jacks here, or Jack-10. This, this is too big on the river as well. It's going to be a big overfolded line here, bro, with 10s for three quarters here. Like, they shouldn't get to this river like this anyways. Just bet the flop. And now we have to fold here. Now we have to fold with the Jack-10. But understand, man, with these hands, this Jack-10 in particular. And again, this is a good example of you not knowing. Because, like I said just two seconds ago, that you probably never drilled this node that much button versus big blind. But these hands just benefit from betting half pot here, for example. And as I said, denying equity to some random two cards, whether that's Queen X of Diamonds, Queen Seven of Clubs, whatever the fuck it is, and just getting King Highs and Ace Highs to fold, bro. Like, somebody might end up overfolding, like, Ace Seven here versus Half Pot, and they probably shouldn't. They probably shouldn't. So, again, my advice to you, man, like I recommend for most people that I do in this Sweat Session reviews, is just, like, drill Big Blind versus Button, 
and drill big blind versus hijack because button and, and cut off are going to share very similar heuristics and hijack and under the gun because the ranges aren't that much different are going to share very similar heuristics across a lot of textures and boards in general nines here i'd rather call as well nines here i'd rather call in this formation given the under the gun opened i think that's fine do you think that is fine Uh, we'll just check back the nines here, bro, and not worry too much about it. Probably just try and check this down, I guess. Ace three, I will be defending as well versus 2.2. The smaller the raise first in size, and guys, the more you can defend. I'm not saying to defend ace three offsuit against hijacker under the gun or cutoff, but versus the button, who's opening 40 to 45% of hands, and you're getting a better price versus 2.5, I will start defending all offsuit ace versus 2.2 and below. And nines here just has to be a fold. Nah, this is too much on the turn, bro. This is way too much of an overcall. Like the under the gun, like the under the gun here technically is still uncapped. Okay, so like small blind is leading out into three other players as well. Like he's quite tight as well, a 27-9 guy. So he's probably not going to be the most erratic pre-flop or sorry, post-flop. And you need to be conscious of that man. 10-6 10, I'm opening as well too. 10-6 I'm opening as well. Yeah, I, I think you just got lucky there, bro. Honestly, I think you just got lucky there with the nines. I think we're none of the gun calls there, bro. And that's a good example of still, like, you, you might justify, oh, I was right, so why would I fold? It's not about being right that time, man. It's just about understanding generalities when you are multi-way and what you should and shouldn't continue as a baseline. Nines for me there, I would call if the under the gun didn't call. I would call for a one versus a fish again. But like, when the under the gun calls there, I'm just mucking nines. I'm just mucking nines. Like, it's hard to build heuristics for multi-way spots in general, but, like, overall, man, you, you just have to ask yourself, like, am I ahead here enough to justify calling here? <sighs> Nines there for me, it's just going to be a fold, and I'm not going to worry too much about it. Not going to worry too much about it at all. Checking here, probably range in these formations. I don't mind three betting eights against this stack size as well, but it's probably going to be on the cusp of me falling sevens and sixes and below. And I will start betting here this uh, King Jack. And it, 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 the thing is, you don't even know. I would rather keep my, the range wider by the river where you're going to get more falls, man. So I wouldn't bet any bigger than half pot here. Um, and given we have the King of Diamonds here, I'm probably going to give up. But exploitively against this profile, man, I actually don't mind potentially betting here again. But yeah, it's whatever. Might go half pot, half pot here, or three quarters. Might just go half pot here on block and six, seven. And some random two cards that you might have. But giving up here, I don't mind, honestly. I really don't mind. Yeah, that's just obviously the shit part there. But look, I would rather just bet small on the turn and always bet river than bet three quarters here. And then feel I can't bluff river that, that I'm going to get enough folds. I think that's very, very important of a deviation. Bet smaller on the turn there, man, with them bluff hands and just bluff the river for half, or sorry, three quarters or bigger, one or the other. And you're going to be printing whether you do or don't get called. It's a pretty good fucking um, thing to tell you, by the way. Pretty good thing to tell you. Uh, two is here just going to be checking down or trying to check down. Uh, 
Yeah, probably okay. We'll call them in bed. I think it's fine. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to fall versus that size, but I never expect to win here, but we're getting like, what? <laughs> four, four to one in a call here or something like that. Yeah, we're just flicking a call here, mate. And probably just expect to lose always. I mean, fucking queens, man. Jesus Christ. Can never be too passive pre-flop, lads. Can never be too passive pre-flop. Um, obviously this guy's a whale. I'm probably just gonna make this like 12, 13 big blinds, man. Same size, and I'll probably make it if you made a three. Just so I know because the pot size there is gonna be uh, similar. So, uh, look, if you make this 12 or 15, it's not gonna make a big difference, but as long as we're raising, or three betting, I, I should say. Yeah, I, I, as I said, I'd rather just nearly make this 12 big blinds here, man, so I know that it's the same pot size pre-flop. Or sorry, is it, like if this guy opens for 3, I'm going to make a 12, is the point I'm trying to get across here. If this guy opens for 5x, I'm still going to make a 12 because I think their calling range isn't going to be any different. All right? And at least then I know that, as I said, the pot size post-flop would be the exact same. And I'm going to implement the same exploits because against fish, it really, really doesn't matter. I don't think you need to make this so big, honestly. Like, exploitatively with, like, jacks plus here. I'd nearly rather do that. But against a 5x here, man, with ace-king, I'd rather just keep with the 12. But he does fold anyways. Like, look, either or is fine, as I said. I'd rather just keep keep it to the 12 there, exploitatively. Because I know the exploits against recreational post-flop. Uh, would definitely make this bigger as well with the 6s. Would make this... 5x, 5, 5.5. 5. This guy's playing extremely wide range of hands here, like 60v pip. Would honestly start with a small bet here with range with this against this profile. Because if you check here now any bets, you just have to fold. And especially fold it against that. As I said, I would just check behind here as well, mate. Just check behind. We'll get, we'll get, yeah, I was just going to say that. I was just going to say that. Get into the habit of marking players, man. Because I see there your guy in the big blind as well is a 60 V, 60 v pip fish. And 60 big blind stack. We're going to, we're going to be pretty confident this is a recreational. And AS8, we're just going to fold here. I would just fold here versus pot, man, already. Like, again, 32, 11, or 32, 1.1 pre PFR. Like, it's just a little bit ambitious here, uh, calling this on the turn. We are somehow, somehow ahead. But again, like that, mate, just because you're ahead this time, it just doesn't justify calling with AS8 there. But maybe I'm wrong. Like, I have one justification there, and it is never to overinvest in a limp pot. And I know there's only a pot size bet on the turn there, but would rather just let that go and not worry too much about it. Because a lot of the times when fish bet pot, man, they are going to bet on the river again quite often. Which is going to de-incentivize us to call them sort of hands. Like, obviously it would never fall a pair. And probably always call a pair on the river. But, yeah. Like, them hands are not going to make, you make or break you anyways, for the most part. This is a small squeeze here that I do think we have to call nines. I do think we have to call nines. If we start falling nines here, mate, we're just falling way too much and we're getting a good price here to call. Don't want to see a fall here, man. Yeah, I'm not happy with this. Like, you have to understand that this is just a little bit over 4x. Like, he should be making this probably 14 big blinds, given that somebody cold called in the cutoff. We're just getting way too good of a price here with nines to not flop a set, mate. Because if you get if you flop a set against that guy, you're always going to get paid most of the time because his range is going to be very very tight. So if his range is very very tight, there man, you're getting more implied odds for pocket nines there against a tighter range. Then if you hit the nine, they're going to overinvest post flop probably, and you're just going to make a lot of money. Jack nine, you can still bet the turn here for half pot because you're still going to have queen x of clubs and nine x of clubs potentially, but checking back most of the time is going to be fine. Problem is here, if you if he pots this river, you have to fold. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, I would rather just bet half pot there, mate, and if he raises, obviously fold. But the thing is, he's probably not going to raise there ever because he wants you to continue betting if you have a bluff. I, what I tend to do in them spots, man, where I don't really want to face a bet on the river if they do, because, like, man, when you check back the turn here, like, you're never checking back a 10. Most, if not ever. So, yeah, we're going to get bluffed here a lot, potentially. You might and you might not, but I'd rather just bet half pot there to check back river. Then check like you did there and face a three quarters of pot size. But if I, I like... There's still, that node is still going to be under bluff there in the bet check bet line on that board texture in general. Yeah, we're coming close to the 30 minute mark, mate. You did send me a 37 minute long video, but we are not going to get through it, but we'll see. Might do 32, 33 minutes. We'll see what, com see what comes up in terms of time-wise. We are good for another f 10, 10 minutes or so. We might end up getting the rest of it. We'll see. We might not. Um, definitely going for an over bet here. Pot size is probably fine. Pot size is probably fine. Either, either is fine. They're 150. Pot size... Going to be overbetting that turn on an ASI texture usually anyways. And again like that, man, this is too wide to be isolating here. Way too wide. Like, given that there was two limpers here, my isolating range would be what I'm opening in the hijack. Is what it would be. Is what it would be. Like, I don't, I don't mind opening this if there was only one limp, mate. I don't mind opening or isolating this if there was only one limp. But given that there was two, two limps here, man, you have to try and get falls and, and just play against two ranges here that one of them is always going to call, I'd say. So I'd rather have a little bit more of a stronger range to do that. And usually when I'm isolating here with, say, under the gun limps, falls around to you on the button, I'm opening what I open in the cutoff. But given that there was two limps here, which you're never going to see that often on my games, for example... I'd rather just open what I'd open in the hijack here in this situation and just have that little bit more of a tighter range. Because you can't really open the same range that you're opening here on the button, in my opinion. So I do think it makes the most sense to tighten up that range even more, given that you're against two, two um, uh, limpers itself. Is the best way to attack that, in my opinion. Jack nine not falling. No, Jack nine falling, yeah. Not defending them is what I meant to say. Yeah, it's too wide. Defend this versus 2.3. Don't defend this versus 2.5. Especially on 10 and L rake, man. Way, way too wide. This is this is this is only mixed, like this is called half the time versus 2.3 on 500 and L ranges and on versus 2.5 versus two sorry, versus 2.5 on 500 nil ranges, it's folded pure. So you can imagine if it's doing that on 500 nil ranges, mate, what it would look like if you ever designed uh, ranges for 10 nil specifically. Would be a pretty fucking easy fold, I would say. Gonna start with a small bet here on the turn, though. Block bet, 25, 33, whatever your personal preference is, mate, it doesn't matter too much. Doesn't matter too much at all. Half pot is probably okay as well, but I'd rather go for a block bet with these sort of like, you know, top pair weak, weak ish kicker. Yeah, I don't know why you're leading this with the king queen now. Just lead equity on the turn here, man, and not some random king highs. Yeah, I have two over cards. It's not good enough in this situation. I, 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 I'll tell you this much. You better be. Okay, I would never bet king queen there. I might bluff King Queen on the river if it checks through again, but I'm never betting King Queen on the turn there. When I decide to bet the turn in a multi way spot like that, it's always going to be some form of equity. Good shot plus. Good shot plus, mate, in my opinion. Now, you might argue two over cards if you're in position might be fine as well. But honestly, bro, 
On the turn, I will bluff any equity. On the river, if it checks through again, I will bluff any two cards that doesn't have showdown value. Period. Always. We're going to go for another two minutes, mate. I'm going to do an outro then on the 52, 53 minute mark. At Queen 10 here, we're going to check back. Like this, I'll see what you do here with the Jack, Queen Jack. Yeah, this is a mistake here now. This is a definite mistake. Your man bet eight big blinds here in this spot, man. Fish called already. Like, you just don't have back doors, man. Like, I know you, you you technically got away with it the last two times I pointed it out that continuing selectively with this situation is important. When a reg bets 70 to 80% into two players like this on this board texture and the under-the-gun player, who's a fish, I get that, calls. With this hand, with bare... Like, you don't even know if you're good on a jack. You're definitely not good on a queen in my opinion here in this situation. Like, you have to continue so selectively in this spot, man. In this spot. Like, if I get proven wrong here again, I really don't care. Like, you're just going to get blown off your hand here, man. You have to fold this on the turn. You have to fold this on the turn. Seriously. Oh, sorry, fold this, fold this on the flop, is what I mean. Like, ask yourself on the flop, man. Have I good backdoors with, with this top pair? You know, I wouldn't be folding. You just have to be selective, man. Ask, look, look at your hand, look at your backdoors. Um, like, e even if your man bet eight big blinds here on the flop like he did, and the under-the-gun player folds, I would honestly start falling Queen Jack already, man, against the reg profile. I would honestly start falling Queen Jack against the reg profile, I swear. Fish are going to be different here. I'd love if you actually fold this hand. I would fucking want to see that run out. But I'd like to have saw that. Would have liked to have saw that, but it is what it is. Right, we're going to finish up on this ace nine hand. We'll finish up on this ace nine hand because we're on the 53 minute mark and I don't really like to go over the 55, 56 minute mark itself. Check in here. I'm just going to check it down the river here. Going to fall if you face a bet though. Yeah, I'm just done with the hand here now. Yeah, this is too much. This is too much again. Too much again. I'm, I, I'm blown away to see that, man. To, that he's bet that into four players. But anyways, on a 4 to straight board like that, man, just be careful. Uh, we'll finish up there, bro. Look. I know there was a lot of multi-way spots there, man, where you've kind of proved me wrong in some regard. But if you're going to take anything from it, man, from this, from what I can remember off the top of my mind, start studying the big blind versus button. And drilling hands on GTO Wizard. Um, start drilling hands, big blind versus hijack on GTO Wizard. Play full hands. See how many blunders, see how many errors you start coming across. Uh, and just trying to start getting better in that node in particular. So I missed a few CBETS opportunities there, but nothing too drastic. Look, you're going to have to review this yourself, man, and just kind of write down notes in terms of what I said. But I do think multi-way, man, you might be over-investing. Like, look, I can't, I can't base what that looks like. Yeah, okay, you got three out of four of them right from what I said. 
doesn't matter in my opinion. Multi-way spots, man, when you move up stakes and stuff like that, you need to be so selective against what in what you put in. Now, look, there was two or three examples against two recreationals or two spots against recreational and multi-way. I'm fine with that. There's always a deviation versus fish, but you're not going to get that many multi-way spots against fish because there's not going to be that many fish on higher games when you do start going playing higher. So just take that into account, mate. Just be selective in what you, do, what you defend multi-way when there's regs involved. Against fish, man, I don't mind calling, but when they start sizing up, just be conscious of that. 50% is usually going to be a low, a usually over bluff sizing against wrecks in a lot of streets and a lot of nodes in particular, all right? Um, so yeah, guys, if you made it this far, I do appreciate it. Um, any questions, anything like that, just drop them in the comments. Um, I usually reply to all the YouTube comments on Mondays when I allocate that day for making content. So um, yeah, if you made it this far, thanks so much. And uh, Shylock, if I'm saying that right, or Shylock, Shylock 8, whatever it is, mate. Apologies if I misbuttered that or whatever. But thanks so much for sending the photos, mate. You know the story behind why you had to do it so swiftly. And I'm really, really happy you accommodated that for us. So um, look, do, do the things I mentioned and you should be fine going forward, man. But uh, you said there wasn't a lot of spots in that session. For me personally, there was, okay? But as I said, thanks so much for sending the footage again. And thanks everyone for viewing this. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. GG.